back here on the Senior Network. We're discussing the holidays and seniors and communication. I know technology has changed a lot, hasn't it? It has. Tell us a little bit about what you're finding in the homes now. Sure, sure. Um, it, we're, we're entering an interesting time because um, we've got these um, younger caregivers, and by younger I mean our average age of our caregivers is about 35. Mm -hmm. And they are very up on technology. And sure. so they're very up on the Facebook and um, YouTube and FaceTime and and um, you know even to the fact that when a, a client wants to know, hey, do I need a, um, a sweater if we're going out to, um, to the doctor, what they're gonna do is instead of picking up the paper and reading you know, what the forecast is, they're going straight to weather.com. Right. Mm -hmm. So this is our first point of contact for I think all of us, but specifically the caregivers. Um, so that what we're trying to do is communicate to the family members and the responsible parties that let's embrace this and let's get this, you know, let, let's, let's get this involved and let's say, okay, look, if your mom, you know, is here in Hilton Head, but has a grandson who has a violin concert in Ohio, why don't you, you know, let's FaceTime that or let's, let's get that recorded and you can send us that or you can put it on YouTube. And then mm -hmm. when mom's up the next day, if she goes to bed too early, we can play that for her. So there's no need for her to be missing these things. So that's the kind of thing we're right. encouraging. And so from, because uh, I don't FaceTime anymore, but I mean that yeah. if you've got like an, an, an iPad or something, you sure. can actually do that on, on a larger screen, yeah, right? Absolutely. There's okay. no reason to be missing like a, a nightly or a weekly phone call with anybody that's literally face to face. So um, they don't have to be missing how they're growing up, literally. It doesn't sure. have to be just a voice phone call anymore. They can see each other. Right. Yeah. And I know some people don't realize, too, in home care that another part of this is you can actually, we've had caregivers to travel back and forth mm. with the clients, correct? We have. Yeah. We've had a number of instances where um, the caregivers have been asked to go either on a vacation, sure. literally, like um, we've had some clients who vacation in, um, I think it was Cape Cod, um, and have gone up for two months out of the, t out of the year and lived with the client. Um, we've had uh, clients who've had to go to New York City, Manhattan for a wedding, right. um, and ha we've flown the caregivers up there. So there's no reason anymore to be missing these life cycle yeah, events. Exactly. Yeah. Well, Barbara, tell us a little bit. Um, I know we talked about grieving and some of the things, but give us some ideas on how to help someone where they're struggling with a loss. I know okay. that's a very vague question, but... Right. An expert like you can try to help answer that. Well, one of the things that when, when you were talking about the technology that, um, you know, around the holidays, I've, I've had some people that say, my family wants me to come, you know, drive out of state or fly out of the state, and I just don't feel like I'm ready for that. And I've encouraged them to use the FaceTime so they yeah. can have that time with them. And also now you have the Google and you have Alexa. And, you know, one of the things that's very difficult is when you come home to a house and it's empty. And so I encourage them to get that. And as soon as you walk in, you can say, play music or, you know, and, it, and you have that sense of not being alone. So I'm glad you brought that up. It's important. Um, but, you know, I, I think the main thing is that you have to keep moving through grief. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I encourage people, if, if they're having a bad day, to embrace their feelings and not push themselves too much. But also don't isolate yourself completely. And that you have to tell you know, we're all like, we don't know how to help someone. You know, do you talk about that loved one or do you not mention that loved one? And everyone wants their loved one to be discussed. Um, that's how we keep them alive is through the memory. So I encourage, all, you know, the people I work with to share with their family and friends. You know, I'd like for you to say my husband's name or I'd like to talk about him. Um, or, you know, I, I don't feel like I can come to this particular thing, but Keep it, continue inviting me because I want to be included. So um, just really sharing their feelings and a lot of self-care. Um, you know, I've had patients in the past where I ended up with a caregiver under hospice care because they, you know, spent so much time taking care of their loved one and they didn't take care of themselves and they became sick because it does manifest in physical ways too. So really a lot of self-care and I even tell um, the people I work with, be selfish. It's all about you. You know, and your loved ones will understand if you say no or if you're not able to do something right now. And really encouraging them to, again, take in everything that's positive, whether what they're listening to, who they're hanging around with, uh, what they're watching on TV, and what they're reading. Very interesting. Tell us a little bit about the process, because I know when, when a patient comes to hospice, because mm -hmm. you have so many folks, you've got yourself, social workers, 
you've got you know medical directors, you've got nurses, you've got all this staff. Tell us a little bit about when do you get involved in that process? Right. Um, we do have a great staff, and so it really makes my job easier because the social workers and our spiritual coordinator um, have that relationship with the patients, and a lot of times they'll want to keep them and work with the families because they have that relationship. So they really make my job easier. Um, I'm happy to go in at any time because sometimes people, um, you know, we can anticipate that they're going to have this grief and mm -hmm. they're already going through loss because you may have someone that's been really ill or you may have someone that has some cognitive issues. And so you're already seeing the changes. Um, so I, I can go in then if the nurses right. need me sure. or even people in the community. But most of the structure is after we lose that patient, then I'll make contact with them by phone and I have letters that I send out with uh, different readings and hopefully helpful information um, at different months. But I do individual sessions in the office. Um, I'm glad to go to someone's house if they're not able to come in the office. And since I've been here, it, it's really a, about 50% um, of our patient families and 50% of the community. The support groups are about the yeah. same. So I have a lot of people that and even like you were talking about, people will come here because of um, the beautiful location. They're coming from the snow. You've got the snowbirds, and they'll come in and say, you know, I just had a loss, and I'm having a really difficult time. Can I come in and see you? And I'm like, sure, come in. That's wonderful. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Well, hold that thought. We need to take a break. Stay with us. We'll be right back.